Most programmers have a degree in engineering or science. Do you know why? There are two main reasons for this. One, generally speaking, engineers can think logically. Two, engineers are good at math. One of the major reasons I was able to get a job at Google without a computer science degree is because I am above average at math. Now I cannot teach you all the math I know in one short video. You anyway don't need most of it to become a programmer. Let me do this. I'll share five essential math skills that will get you 80% there. The rest of the 20% you can learn on the go as you encounter new problems. But why do programmers even need math? Imagine that you are a software engineer at Google and you are given a critical problem to solve. Many Google users are not able to access the website because of an overloaded server. This problem is getting worse with every passing minute. That's because the client side is configured to do an automatic retry after one second for every failed call. You talk to a senior engineer on the team and she recommends using exponential backup for retries. What does exponential mean? You ask her. She points you to the documentation. If your math skills are not good, it might take you a long time to understand and implement exponential piece of the algorithm, even after reading the documentation. In the meantime, the entire internet traffic will see a huge drop because for many people, no Google means no internet. Now if this example doesn't convince you, here is an even more important reason to learn math. Most tech companies conduct coding interviews to see if you're a good fit for the role. And whether you like it or not, they ask algorithmic style questions in these interviews. At the end of the interview, the interviewer usually asks you time and space complexity of your solution. In order to answer these questions and actually get the job, you need to know some basic math concepts. Many people who come from a non-CS and non-engineering backgrounds have a hard time answering these questions. That's why I've chosen the top 5 math skills for today keeping these interviews in mind. Now I know that there's a sizable number of you who pretty much hate coding interviews and don't want to go through them. And I completely respect your position. But for the vast majority of us, we don't have the luxury to give up on our dreams just because we don't like one step of the process. This video is for those people. Let's learn some math. To learn the first concept, we need to start with an exercise. Here is a piece of code that contains a for loop nested inside another for loop. What is the time complexity of this code? In other words, how many times will this code print hello world for any arbitrary value of n? This video is going to be interactive so you can pause the video and leave the answer in the comments. If your answer is order n square or n square times, then you are going to benefit a lot from what I am about to tell you. Most of the people who answer n square do it because they confuse the code I gave you with this other piece of code. They see a nested for loop inside another and immediately conclude n square which is the wrong answer in this case. To understand why that is, let's think from the first principles. Looking at the code, it's obvious that the outside for loop runs n times. Each time this outside loop runs, we go inside and run this nested loop k times. We don't know what that k is at this time, but we'll find out shortly. So in total, we print k into n hello world statements. Now if you look at this other easier and more popular piece of code, the internal loop also runs n times. But that's not the case in the code I gave you. What I want you to take away from this is that whenever you have a that happens x times, and every time a happens, b happens y times, b will happen a total of x into y times. Now to know the value of k in the last exercise, we need to know this second concept. So here is a question for you. You are given a stick that is 32 meters in length. You break it into two halves. You throw the right piece away and you break the left piece into two halves again. You throw away the right half and keep breaking the left piece until you have a stick of length 1 meter left. How many times did you break the stick in total? You can pause the video and leave the answer below. If you answered 5, then you are right. Here is an interesting observation about the answer. If you take 2, which is the total number of pieces you break the stick into every time, and if you take 5, which is your final answer, and you multiply 2 to itself 5 times, you get 32 which is the original length of the stick. In other words, 2 to the power 5 is 32. Whenever you have an equation like this, 5 is called the logarithm of 32. Technically speaking, it's logarithm to the base 2. But in computer science, people usually think in terms of logarithm to the base 2. So we can just call it logarithm or log here for our purpose. But it's important to know that in math, people usually mean logarithm to the base 10. When they say log, I recommend that you read a little bit more about logarithm on your own. Anyway, in the generic case, if 2 to the power of x is n, then x is called the logarithm of n. So in the stick example, you broke the stick a total of log 32 times, which is 5. Going back to the example with two for loops, if you look closely at the internal for loop, it does exactly the opposite of the stick breaking example. You start with the stick of length 1. When you do j is equal to j multiplied by 2, or in other words you double the length, you are bringing a stick of the same length from somewhere and you are attaching it to the original stick and you keep doing it until you reach the length n. So how many times do you have to double the length of the stick this way until you reach the length of n? Looking at the stick example I gave you, it's going to be log n and that's the k we were looking for. So total number of times you print hello world in this case is n into k which is n log n. 
If you have some experience with algorithms, I'm sure you have already seen that the stick breaking example is very similar to binary search algorithm. Logarithm also appears in some other algorithms like sorting and some heap related problems. Before I can explain what exponential means in exponential back off, we have to understand this third concept of the day. For that, I have another question for you. How many three digit numbers can you make by using digits 1, 2 and 3? Given that you can use each digit only once, you can pause the video and leave the answer in the comments. If you answered 6, then you are right. But what if I ask the same question for 9 digit numbers using digits 1 to 9 without repetition? To answer this question, you would need to know what a factorial is. Let's understand factorial using the 3 digit problem. We can call the first digit A, second one B and the third one C. Let's pick the first digit of this number. For that, we can use any digit from 1, 2 and 3. So we have 3 options here. Let's say we pick 2 for the first digit. For the second digit, we only have 2 options left because we can use 1 digit only once. Let's say we pick 3 for the second digit. Now for the last digit, we only have 1 option which is 1. So A can have 3 values and for each A, B can have 2 values. And for each B, C can have one value. Can you see that we can use the first concept we learned today here? So the total three digit numbers would be a multiplication of three, two and one, which is six. For the nine digit case using all the digits from one to nine, the answer would be the multiplication of all the numbers from one to nine. And this multiplication is called nine factorial and is written like this. Factorial is nothing but the multiplication of all the numbers from one to that number, including the number itself. Factorial appears in many algorithms like finding subsets of a set and permutation of numbers, etc. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about the fourth concept, which is exponentials. And for that, we need to go back to the three digit numbers example. Let me change the question a little bit for you. How many three digit numbers can you make using the digits one, two and three, if you can use a digit more than once? I would love to see your answer in the comments. If you go back to the example, I gave you for factorials, you will see that now we have three options for A, B and C. And that's why total such numbers now would be 3 into 3 into 3, which is 3 to the power 3. And this is called exponentiation or exponential. Let's try to understand exponential back off based on what we know now. In the exponential back off algorithm, you will do the first retry for a failed request after x seconds. If the request fails again, you will increase the wait time for retry by let's say two times. If the request fails one more time, you increase the wait time by two times again and you keep doing it. If you look closely, the wait time for retrying the failed request is increasing exponentially here. Hence the name exponential back off. One of the main characteristics of something that is exponential is that it increases or decreases really fast. For example, the spread of COVID was exponential because one person could let's say infect three people and each of those three will infect three more and so on. Exponential growth is a powerful concept for life in general and it can be life changing for new programmers. That's because in the beginning, most programmers have this nagging feeling that they are not growing fast enough. Many get demotivated and give up as a result. But here is a graph showing the power of exponentiation from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. If you just improve 1% each day for 365 days, you will be 38 times better at the end of the year. And if you build bad habits and become just 1% worse each day, you will lose 97% of what you have today in one year. That's exponentiation in action for you, my friend. Another concept you need to know about is modulus. For positive numbers, modulus or mod is the same as what you would normally call remainder in the division of two numbers. Modulus operator is written as a percentage sign. So 27 mod 5 is 2, which is the same as the remainder when you divide 27 by 5. For negative numbers, there is a small difference between mod and remainder, which I recommend you read up yourself. Some popular interview problems that use mod are find greatest common divisor of two numbers and fizz buzz. So now you know the math you need to become a programmer. Next, you need a simple well-defined step-by-step path to learn programming. If you want to know the path I recommend, watch this video. My name is Sahil and I'll see you in the next one.